and welcome to another thrilling episode of Manward in the Field. We are still in uh, Central Park. Uh, we got permits and everything to shoot here, because uh, if there's one uh, place on earth that loves its red tape, it is New York City. And I don't feel like going to the uh, 22nd precinct it's today. It's not nice. Yeah. And despite the Statue of Liberty being just down the street that way, we couldn't be any further away from the idea of, of liberty. Hey, but at least big gulps are legal again. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, but I mean, again, there's no coincidence that we're here. So this is uh, this is a city that has turned being a uh, being a nanny state into an art. You know, New York City loves its regulations. It loves its bogus laws. There's still a ton of blue laws that are still in effect technically here that are insane. It's illegal to recklessly operate roller skates. That's a law. It's illegal to spit on the sidewalk. To give a professional haircut on a Sunday. Sell salted fish sell cigarettes in any store that also has a pharmacy like Walgreens or CVS. And technically you can get a $25 fine for flirting. Yeah, and don't, uh, and don't try to have a puppet show in your front window either. Whether you wanna actually do any of these things is kind of beside the point. It's just the fact that the government is telling you, is stepping in and telling you that you can't, that is kind of what raises our hackles up. You know, you have Bill de Blasio decides that people shouldn't smoke. So he slaps a 10% tax. Uh, he makes it so that you can't buy cigarettes near you. Uh, you know, he didn't make it illegal. He just made it inconvenient. I don't want you doing this thing. And so I'm going to hit you where it hurts your wallet and in politely suggest that you don't do that anymore. Yeah, and now he wants to ban being on your cell phone and walking at the same time. That's right, and that's kind of a, uh, you know, it's a controversial thing in a city here where, what, 90% of the people we've seen it. walking down the street, everybody who's walked past while we've been filming this very episode, buried in their cell phones yeah. or taking selfies, you know, with us because, you know, we're famous. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is a proposed ban on crossing the street while being on your cell phone. And the government wants to fix that by imposing a fine of up to $250 for crossing the street while being on your cell phone. But I'm going to say something controversial here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I actually agree with the idea behind this law. There's no doubt that cell phones are dangerous. I don't know about crossing the street, that's up to you. And I don't know if the government needs to be telling us that, but the, the idea of cell phones being dangerous is something I'll pound my fist about all day long and, and solidly believe in. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, cell phones have been all but endorsed by our society. You know, there's so many government regulations surrounding the use of them, supporting them. And again, there's, we've jumped into it so fast without the know-how of actually what it's doing for us. Right, it's what, what 10 years ago, I mean, actually probably longer now, people have been using cell phones for what, 15, 20 years. But you know, 15, 20 years ago, it was uncommon for every person you know. Now it's almost, it's, it's an inalienable right of somebody yeah. to have a cell phone. Baby's born to go stick that SIM card in his hand and get him a, a cell phone. So it's increasingly seeming like people uh, aren't content to just live in the moment anymore. You know, uh, the, the deepest, most intimate relationship people can have is now with their phone, it's with this device. They look to it. The government made it illegal to flirt with somebody. It's true. If it would just be more legal to flirt, we've all gotten used to the uh, to, to the instant endorphin rush that you get when someone likes a photo of yours, or they validate you in some way. Uh, you know the sort of uh, interactions that you might have to, you know, in the olden days, have waited, you know, hours or even days for from somebody. You are you start to freak out when you don't get an instant, immediate response from them. It's eroding our brains, and this is not just a millennial thing, okay? Uh, baby boomers, Gen Xers, everybody is gleefully diving into the uh, to the instant gratification that they get from a smartphone. You know, uh, people are getting this thing that, again, they couldn't have gotten ever so easily before. It's like a drug. The, the, the fact is that our brains simply aren't wired for this. We've talked about this a lot, and you know, within man where we talk about know-how. Think about what cell phones have done to our know-how, you know, to, to get here. We plug in the, the coordinates in the GPS and there we go. Nobody knows how to read a chart or use a, a compass anymore. Um, and nobody knows their phone number. You know, we know maybe one or two phone numbers and, and, and just those effects on our brain and, and what we're turning to with our phone. We don't have to remember anything. There's no That's, need to commit that stuff to memory. Exactly. Like a, the little box in my pocket will do it. Yeah, but we lose that, that skill. So when we turn to Siri or, or, or Google, for every little bit of knowledge, we're losing that. Our, our brains are, are designed to be sharp, if, if you use it that way, but we're rounding the edges. We're just not exercising our brains the way we're supposed to be. And phones are playing a huge part of that. And we're waking up with them every day and just starting our day this way. It's, it's bad. It's really troublesome from a health 
standpoint. Right. People are addicted to the convenience. They're addicted to not having to, like, the, to the convenience and to the, again, that yeah. instant gratification. There's no other way to say it than uh, people are addicted to their cell phones. And they've been designed that way. And the, the app makers, the, the, the phone designers are specifically designing phones to be addictive. Right. Because the longer you're looking at that screen, the longer you're glued to it, the better of a consumer you are. Yeah. What is the stat? Um, out of 24 hours in a day, people are, are glued to their phone for like four hours, something like that if not mm -hmm. longer yeah think about like add that up through over the course of a week that's almost that's like a part-time job that you were spending oh. it's what 28 hours 28 hours a week just think how much more people could get done in a week with, with without wasting that time on a cell phone everybody says you know I don't have time for that or you know I couldn't get I can't to finish it. this book I can't take on that project I've got so much yeah. going on put your damn phone down and, and pick up a book you know stop watching TV on your phone and go have a good relationship focus on your connections you know put the phone down and go do some some real work stop scrolling through Facebook yeah your actual connections Okay, but you know, think about that hourly figure. Do you think that's accurate? No, I think it's I think it's way low. So I mean, just filming here, everybody is going by with their cell phone in their hand. We recently polled Manword readers and asked them if somebody they knew had a cell phone addiction, and over 75% of folks responded that yes, they know somebody that they believe has a cell phone addiction. That, that cell phone addiction, that's crazy. Yeah, so people recognize that this is an issue. They realize that it's a problem, not enough to actually put their phone down, but clearly but, yeah. people know something is off, something is wrong, this isn't natural. Yeah, so I mean, that's the first step. We know there's a problem and we know there, we need to do something about it, but so many folks don't know what to do about it. So maybe we just need a law. Yeah, we, we can and we will do an entire episode on the, uh, the physical health issues uh, related to cell phones. There's lots of really compelling research there. But, you know, let's talk about the societal implications. Yeah. Let's talk about the mental health issues. Yeah, I think the epidemic of loneliness that is stretching across the country right now is, you know, way underreported and it needs to be talked about much, much more. So, so here's a crazy fact that you might be familiar with. The average man hasn't made a new flesh and blood friend in five years. That's crazy. You know, we're, we're connecting more and more than, than ever on our phones, texting, you know, Instagram, Facebook. We're talking in quotes, you know, more and more than ever, but we're not making real friendships. You know, somebody you can call up when, when times are tough, get good advice from. That's really scary. Somebody that you feel really supports you, you know, beyond yeah. just sending a thumbs up. And it has very, very strong health effects. Well, and talk about what was that Harvard figure that you found? Yeah, so Harvard did, you know, studied this, this epidemic of loneliness and they found that chronic loneliness can increase your risk of premature death by 50%. So this is literally killing us. So basically, uh, if you don't die texting and walking through a crosswalk, uh, it'll be your unbearable loneliness that kills you. I mean, that's bleak, but there is good news with it. This is all avoidable. Simply put down your phone, cut that addiction, you know, um, with connections. Go out and find a hobby. Find a, a group of like-minded folks to hang out with. In person? Go go to breakfast with a group of men or a group of friends every week. Make it or, or every month. Do something. But just put down that phone and make some real connections. And, and you know, even if you have to pick up the phone and call somebody, it's a lot better than, than just texting them and, and having that emotionless this conversation. Thing makes phone calls? I think it can. Is that the new one? Yeah, I think it can. You know it'd be a good conversation starter? What's that? This video. Send it to your buddy. Talk about the crazy laws. Talk about cell phones and the risks they pose. You know, uh, you could use this as a jumping off point. I don't care if you make fun of our shirts. The important thing is that you get a dialogue going with somebody. A real out loud dialogue. Not texting. Get sit face to face with a friend and discuss these ideas because this is crucial. This is how people become better. This is steel on steel. I guess it's time to get out of here before we get fined for some crazy new law. Sounds good. Cheers to that. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe using the, the buttons below. And if you want to hear what real New Yorkers had to say about the proposed cell phone ban, click right here. <laughs>